what's up, fellas? So, uh, let's uh, play some Kerbal. I'm gonna click the MK1 pod and I'm going to move it upward. Sort of. Just to build a bigger rocket, because I'm gonna build it more than one block high. Or one. Yeah. Edity coupler. Mm, you know. I do the standard. This is some using the MK1 pod and can't exactly, uh, mm, you know, do parachutes up on the top. So I'm gonna attach these radially mounted parachutes that look so amazing and just sort of snuff those on on the side. Alright. I'm gonna move that decoupler down because I don't want that with the parachutes. I'm gonna put parachutes first. Okay. And an advanced SAS because I don't want this thing to flip. No barrel rolls. And then here I decide, you know what, I want to attach an RCS tank, and I have trouble attaching the RCS tank, so, then I get that on, so, uh, normal fuel tank, I'll attach two of those on here, come on, no, yeah, okay, and then the, uh, large yet small, the weak gimbaling engine, and another decoupler, so, what does every rocket need? A second stage. So, here I decide, you know what? Yeah, let's, let's uh, do some cool. Let's add this, and this, and there. And we'll use the larger engine, the uh, non gimbal engine. And you know what rocket is good without boosters? So, let's move that down and we attach that. Now, every rocket needs fans. Except for really big ones that have new ring engines, and this one doesn't. At least not on the first stage. So, I'm gonna attach nose cones, and I'm gonna save some money and put some parachutes on that to recover them later. And yeah, those are gonna wobble a lot, so you wanna attach some stretch to that. And that should do it. I'll call this the B2S Beetle Ven2 Space 2 Beetle, or whatever. Okay, launch that. And on the launch pad, activate your firing controls in your SAS and throttle it up about this point. Blast off. Yep. I'm going up uh, 200 meters. This is meters, not miles. It'll be a lot of miles in a couple of seconds. So, we got Jebediah here. Yep. Crazy maniac. And the reason I chose an airplane cockpit is for the reason that this is here. A couple of seconds. You know, I'm just here watching this. I was watching another show while I recorded this, so I just let this record for a little while. So, uh, yeah, I IVA to show you. I like this cockpit because it gives you a full view. And how to build spacecraft. This is sort of the cockpit design I would do in aircraft style. Uh, the Gemini astronauts, no, not Gemini, Mercury astronauts, that's who I want to say. It, they actually wanted a sort of aircraft style cockpit as to make it easier for them to control in sort of an aircraft style spacecraft. Um, NASA sort of, well, they didn't exactly listen to their astronauts at that time and made them their little cannonball nose cone style rocket that we see. I don't know if I were them I would have listened to them because the flights would have gone a little easier but hey it worked so we're gonna drop these boosters right now. And I'm gonna throttle up to max and start to arc over to the 90 degree vector. This will allow me to this is called a gravity turn. You want to do this about at 10,000 meters, and my rocket wasn't cooperating. So, I'm moving over to the side, and then I hit T just to sort of keep it there, and it didn't cooperate. And I get up to a little higher altitude, a little easier to control, and I get it working out. Yep, here we go. And at this point in your game, you're trying to. You're sort of arcing it over to the right or to your 90 degree area to the east, and your orbit's gonna change up to about 
like around like that so you're still traveling upward but you're going more or less to the side that way to the east my engine sort of cut off here because I ran out of fuel so I had to stage not really an ideal thing but it worked out Anyway, so I was uh, I got it up to 80,000 meters and did a little orbiting burn. This isn't exactly like a circularizing burn. I see them circularize all the time. My my burns aren't very fuel efficient. If you can see my uh, stuff over there, it's sort of draining real fast, and I'm not watching it. And I'm only watching my altitude. I get up to 305,000 meters. I had to maneuver and circularize it there. Probably wasn't the most fuel efficient way to do things, but you know, that's what I did. So you gotta go, so when you're at a maneuver, go to your maneuver node, and mine just so happened to be on the opposite end. So I'm heading over, and I burn this down. I was a little late, so that's why it's a little off, so. Then we sort of. Just going to cockpit view and say, yeah, does it look? Love that galaxy look on there. Little arm of the galaxy. I, I wanted to land near the Kennedy Space Center. That's why we stayed in orbit. And if this is making you dizzy, I'm terribly sorry. Made me sick. So we got to a place where I thought, mm, maybe I can make it. I was uh, dead wrong. So I just burned off the rest of my fuel staged it and when the aviator sort of view this it's a nice picture right there and we just gotta sort of put it in. all right so we're in the atmosphere now and I'm going to activate my parachutes once I hit about 20,000 meters. I like to do this stuff from IVA a lot. I know some people don't like that, but the heck. And I'm going to come down. If you look at my orbital speed, I'm at about 24,000 meters a second. That's, that is not super good. I really wanted to do it. came down a little steep which is why this took a very long time to slow down. If anything, I'm glad I deployed my parachute around here. And I, and I was uh, working on... I thought that... I was a little confused with my altimeter, and I thought that that meant that I was about... Uh, down there, that I thought that was around... 10,000 meters, or 1,000 meters, and uh, that's actually 10,000 meters. The big hand's 10,000, the little hand's about 1,000, the very small, like, little clock hand there that's going around the other way is, uh, about a meter. So, here we're hitting about 10,000 meters above the surface of the ocean, and... So, coming down... About mm, 5,000. Yeah, 5,000 right about now. 55,000, 40, 43, 42, 41, 40,000. Yeah, I really don't like uh, speeding up at this point because uh, if because I've I've had rockets that just get ripped apart by the parachute opening up, so I don't do that. And I like. Uh, I like my rocket, my astronauts to survive. This is a brand new save. So I guess we're coming down about 2,000 meters. The, uh, this is probably exactly what it'd be like. So we're sitting there in mission control going, did he make it? Did he make it? Did he make it? We're watching this come down. The parachutes are flailing everywhere. Oh my gosh. Did he make it? Did he make it? Did he make it? Did he make it? And then we do our calculations right. Oh, and the parachute opens, and 
I don't know about you, but I'd, I'd mess with uh, mission control and wait for the parachutes to open and say, hey guys, I'm here, all systems go. So we're coming down. I, you want to be careful here, so I sped up time that three times. I meant to do it four times, but sort of made a mistake. And uh, just coming down nice and slow. Nice and slow. Sort of. Sort of. Yeah, sort of boring. We're at 150 meters and I'm going to slow it down to normal speed. You see my computer glitching out and you've seen that a while. It's just, I don't know what's going on. It's never done that before. It's probably because of the recording software. I'm using QuickTime and I hate QuickTime. But I don't have the money to pay for anything else. So, yeah, this is going to be quite a while before I get any better at this. So, I start messing around with the keys and trying to get back into character view and I accidentally hit the V key, which is the uh, camera rotation. I end up getting orbital view and auto view. In three, two, one, we did it.